I built a walkthrough habitat in Jurassic World Evolution 2, where both the dinosaurs and the guests can migrate between two of the four different biomes on our mini Manticore Island. And in this video, I will show you the process of how I did it. A thank you to the real PPP for life for the suggestion. Let's get into the build. For this build, I'm using a trick to get the guest paths on the gate, and it's completely unmodded, but it does require quite a few steps and some pre-planning. Uh, so if this speed build doesn't make it clear how I did it, you can check out a step-by-step -step tutorial on the channel. And once you're there, consider subscribing for more tips, tricks, and weekly park building episodes just like this one. Well, not just like this one, as you can already tell from how speedy things are going, it's a little bit different this week. Usually for these park building episodes, I do a real time build. Unfortunately, I am once more dealing with a sick bunny and that means just a lot of stress and sleepless nights. And I built this at, I don't even know what time in the middle of the night. <laughs> I just needed a distraction. And obviously I couldn't record for a sofa at the same time. So I'm doing that right now. Um, so yeah, I'm bringing you the content, but it's just a little bit different. We have to make uh, some adjustments for the, uh, for the bunny care. The bunny, of course, always takes priority. But yeah, so for this build, really happy with the suggestion that came in. And I did make some some changes to the suggestion, but as is always the case, you guys come through with really great ideas that, you know, get the gears turning in my head with, um, with coming up for, like, the finalized idea for the build. So for this one, it really sparked with that migration suggestion, and I thought it was really cool to build a habitat that encompasses two of the different biomes. Because, you know, obviously we have a park with four different biomes and it's all very separate by design. But I thought that for, yeah, for one habitat, I think it's pretty cool that both the dinosaurs and the guests can move from one to the other and create like that weird experience. By the way, as I'm rambling, as I do, uh, you just saw me put down a gate on the guest path and that is all thanks to this exploit of a glitch that's in the game. I did make a mistake, which we'll come to later. Um, well, there's another mistake. We really need an undo button in this game, honestly, uh, but I made a bigger mistake that I'll come to regret later. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's just this exploit of a glitch in the game it requires quite a few steps, so it's not as easy as modding, but you know, mods aren't available for everyone. However, this trick is available for everyone, and I think it's pretty cool to get a uh, to get a gate onto the guest path for these walkthrough enclosures. Now, for the uh, for the guests to actually be able to go through the gate, the gate needs to be open. So in terms of the dinosaurs, I did go with Atmodosaurus as was requested in like the, the, the comment suggestion that I took, but I also added Brachiosaurus and we couldn't go smaller than Atmodosaurus. Um, I think even Pachyrhinosaurus, which was suggested might be able to squeeze through the gate. I'm not sure. I haven't done any extensive research on it, but I decided to err on the side of caution and use quite large species for this walkthrough habitat just to ensure that they won't actually walk out of the habitat. You know, it's a walk through habitat, not a walk out habitat. Um, so yeah, that's that was like the the, the integration there. Uh, and it's I will say it's not easy. Uh, the trick with the gate on the guest path is much easier to do at like the start of a build when you know you're dealing with a blank canvas, but I made it work. And as you can see, I'm just now bringing back in the shape of Mini Manticore Island. That is, of course, like the main gimmick here that the island is shaped like Manticore Island and has four different biomes, although not necessarily the correct biomes, but you know, creative liberty, am I right? <laughs> um, so yeah, when you're, this is like a little tip if you're building an island with a specific shape, like me, like with Mini Manticore Islands, or what I did previously with Mini Nublar, I think it's really important to leave your drawing, like the outline of it, available until you have finished whichever section you're working on here. Because, for example, right here, it worked out really well that I still had that perfect outline in the snow, so I could mess with the terrain, uh, mess with the waterline, and then still bring it back and return to that perfect manticore shape. 
Okay, so I've placed the gates. Uh, I've brought the island back into its into its original shape. And now I'm sort of working on like the transition area between the two. And it's sort of like this mountain pass that cuts through the mountain. That's, yeah, that's what mountain passes do. Not exclusively, I think. It doesn't matter. We have a mountain pass. <laughs> there, there's not too much mountain left at the edge there, but this was one of the few places where I could still incorporate this idea of going from one biome to the next. And uh, honestly, I feel like it fit here pretty well. And yeah, with a little bit of mountain at the edge there, I think, I think it works out in quite a fun way. Uh, of course, I always play around with elevation within a habitat. So here you can see that the snow biome is actually a little bit higher than the redwood biome half of the habitat. And within the redwood biome, we're also going to add some, some different levels to it. Again, just to make it more interesting. Um, speaking of different levels, it was really difficult to get the gate on like the exact same level as the rest that I already built. As you can see right there, there's like this little bump on the world where the gate is because it's a little bit higher. And that was really frustrating at first until I realized that I could use it. I'm thinking right now. I'm thinking so hard right now. I don't remember what I was thinking about. I might not have even been thinking. I might have just like checked out. Hello? Evo, past Evo, past Evo, are you okay? There she is. <laughs> She's back. She's back online. Anyway, there's like this little elevation and it's a teeny tiny bit of elevation. And it was really frustrating at first and I considered like trying, like redoing it. But then I figured, you know what, let's, let's use it. And I think that honestly could be like um, a tip in and of itself. Like sometimes things don't work out as planned. But instead of desperately trying to fix it and trying to make it perfect, maybe once in a while, once in a while, just try to like roll with it and see what you can make of it. And honestly, I feel like this teeny tiny height difference here actually worked out in a really fun way. Like I, I found a way to use it, use the force, and yeah, I think it. I think it turned out quite well, actually. So sometimes when you might think I made a mistake, think like Bob Ross. No, no. There are no mistakes, just happy accidents. Okay, so I've started on the Redwood side of things and as per usual, I'm starting with the guest section and not the actual habitat. I just really like building guest sections. <laughs> um, so I added like two viewing galleries so people could look into the habitat normally. Uh, there is of course the entrance with the gate and I decided to do like this double thing where there's like this decorative arch and then the, the security gate afterwards. Uh, and there's some amenities as well. I've placed this amenity like right in front of the viewing galleries. I kind of like doing that. It's not for everyone. But it creates like this secluded little corner for the viewing galleries that I really like. And I like that the guests don't have to meander around the amenity to, uh, to get there. Uh, restroom as well. I'm gonna be placing that slightly differently later on. Uh, but that's like the basic gist of it. You know, those buildings are like at the core of this of this guest section. And um, in terms of path, I didn't do anything particularly fancy. Uh, <laughs> which is unusual for me, I know. And for this, for this guest section, I did already start to think about, you know, how to incorporate the next section. Because that's, that's going to be the challenge of this build. Like, it's so... It's so episodic, it's so segmented, that there are certain points where it's going to be a struggle to connect one build to the next. Um, but I feel like it is starting to work out. Like this redwood section is already connecting nicely to uh, the tiny terrors part and the entrance to the hidden adventures. I think it is working out. So my, my faith that I would be able to pull that off in the end is... So far, not misplaced. Um, I might be, um, I don't know, counting my chickens before they hatched. Who knows? <laughs> so far, it's working out, though. But now that the builds are getting closer together, it's worth thinking about how it connects to the rest of the park, even though we aren't quite there yet. Okay, so for the taiga entrance section, I made it a little bit different. Um... 
but all of that, uh, <laughs> this is this is all gonna have to be redone. Honestly, it's quite sad. You might already be able to see the mistake that I made, honestly. Um, but yeah. <laughs> so here you can see that, you know, I'm just thinking about placing other things in the near vicinity. Like, it still needed a hotel, so I placed a hotel a, a little bit back there. A, here you go. This is this is where I realized my mistake. I had deleted too much path and without the trick you can't actually get path close to the gate. So I had only one thing to do which was to delete the gate that I worked so hard on to place there with like the lagoon glitch and everything. In the end I had to delete it. I did consider redoing it entirely, you know, flattening the map building the the plateau putting the lagoon back in and just completely starting over but i decided against it <laughs> again i'm dealing with other stuff right now and um consider this like your your motivational message of of the week don't don't it's a game <laughs> it's a game it's supposed to be fun if you make a mistake it's whatever. It's it's still an awesome build. It's fine. If you don't feel like spending 20 minutes to fix it, don't fix it. <laughs> that's that's the message that I want to leave you with. It's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. It has to be fun. There you go. That's that's my motivational message. <laughs> I'm getting way too distracted during this build with like, you know, the peripheral stuff like this, this path around the aviary and stuff like that. But again, I did realize that at this point, you know, the, the separate builds that I've done are starting to encroach on each other. So I have to think about how to connect them at some point. And um, that some point is this point. <laughs> anyway back to the redwood section and making the most of that teeny tiny bit of height difference. Now here you see that I did move the uh, toilet over a little bit just to give us a little bit more space over there at the exit point of the tiny terrace section and then it's just it's it's honest to god just a mess trying to <laughs> trying to fit this path in but as is always the case we make it work in the end. Um, the redwood section as a whole though is getting pretty close to being finished. We have two more areas where we can add a, um, uh, a habitat. We have the habitat right in front of like our, our entrance section, you know, our, our tall overlook that looks out into all four of the biomes. And we have this little awkward area uh, to, uh, to the right currently. So yeah, we have only two spots left in the redwood area, but we have quite a bit of space left still in some of the other biomes in this park. So please keep the suggestions going. Because um, as I've been saying, you guys really help out with like uh, giving the ideas or, you know, even with this one. I, I made some changes, but it still like comes from that original suggestion. We can really build on each other's ideas this way. So I hope that you guys can keep it coming with the awesome suggestions that I can incorporate in this park. Feed me ideas, please. I need it. <laughs> Sometimes the creativity just is a little bit lacking, especially like right now when I'm dealing uh, with a sick bunny again, unfortunately. Um, I mean, that is what it is when you have a chronically ill pet. They tend to, you know, be chronically ill. Um, anyway, I do want to I do want to say that I think we need to add a couple more herbivores. Because <laughs> um, I know that like the carnivores are the big popular things. But I want to focus for a little bit on the herbivorous side of nature. Just so that we have a more balanced park in the end. Because so far, with the exception of this build and the Gigantoraptor, all of them have been carnivores. So yeah, keep it coming with like cool herbivores that you want to see on Mini Manticore Island. I'm trying to do a little bit with path in this like guest section. Not to the greatest effect, I will admit. I didn't really have that much space to incorporate other colors, but I do typically, you know, I, I try my best to work in some different path colors, what I like to call 
pass flare to just break it up a little bit and for example like this odd little strip that i could have easily filled in with the brown path or a different color path i decided to fill in with bushes instead i just think it's really important that you know you break up these huge plazas with some different colors and some nature and a lot of rocks oh my god so many rocks <laughs> between um between the last episode and uh, now at the end of this build, the park has, on average, gone down another 20 FPS. Hmm. I wonder why. <laughs> so many rocks. I like it, though. You know me. Uh, no path left unlined. It feels... It feels icky. It fe and path feels naked if I don't add, a, 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 like, a, a, a decorative border of something around it. Anyway. We're incorporating uh, an extra attraction in this part of the park, and that is the zip line. Um, I hate how tall they are, <laughs> but it is what it is. Um, so the zip line goes from the guest section into the walkthrough habitat. So that's all part of the habitat. Uh, but there's going to be like a little bit of a guest section inside of the habitat as well. Now, that's not necessarily something I want to do, but it's something you need to do in order to encourage your guests to actually use your walkthrough habitat. Now, in this case, I probably could have gotten away with not adding any buildings inside of it, uh, because it's, it's basically a thoroughfare, right, between one section of the park and the next. It's like, it's like a main artery of transport at this point. Um... But I still think it's pretty nice to have some amenities in there to lure our guests into the habitats and have them maybe spend a little bit more time with the animals in there. All right, so just more detail work on these guest sections. Um, I really, I really like how it looked. I really like how it's how it's coming together. I think I did okay. Maybe <laughs> I don't know. It was late at night. I'm tired. I, I haven't slept much this week. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, adding bins a very important step nowadays. Adding bins and benches. Honestly, maybe I don't know. You can tell me in a comment down below. Am I the only one who hasn't like? It's not in my routine yet to add bins and stuff. So I feel like honestly I'm neglecting them a little bit, which is ironic considering how much we've been pestering Frontier to add them, and now I'm like neglecting to use them as much as I should, but anyway. <laughs> uh, so I added like this little different moment when guests first arrive in here with like the circular wall piece. I'm behind with my narration. You have no idea what I'm talking about. We're, we're not even there anymore. What is Eva? What is my life? Anyway. <laughs> gonna lie, gonna break up this, um, this little area, line the different path color with a bit of a wall to separate it. Again, I like... I like big plazas, obviously. It's kind of my thing, to be honest. But I like breaking them up so they feel less massive and you can create a little bit more cozy areas. So that's what I've done. Benches on one side to look into what will be a habitat. Uh, tables and chairs on the other side where people can, you know, take their overpriced burgers and um, drink them. That's a deep cut. That's, that's, that's a deep cut into channel lore at this point. <laughs> If you know, you know. If you don't know, then you don't know. Now we're back over on the taiga side of things and decorating that as well. Um, it, it's, it's a smaller section than the redwood side, so I didn't do as much detail here as I did on the other side. But still, you know, adding like the Alamosaurus skeleton, pretending that it's the Brachiosaurus skeleton because that's, you know, the habitat that is beyond these walls. Stuff like that, little details. It's almost like a little hard to narrate because I barely, like, I barely remember doing any of this, <laughs> even though it was last night. Uh, I don't really understand my thought process behind a lot of this stuff. Um, I was just, I was just building. And honestly, that's, that's why I still love this game so much. It's, it's just so easy to build in and to make something awesome. And it's just great escapism for me. And honestly, as I'm dealing with, uh, you know, a sick rabbit, um, you might see some more builds like this, you know, speed build type stuff, where I just build and ramble a little bit afterwards. Uh, maybe we'll do some speed builds with just music. Uh, let me know if that's something you want. Um, you know, stuff like that. So I can just, I can just build and 
have my brain go completely offline because honestly that is what happened as i built this like no thoughts head empty just placing stuff <laughs> that's what happened anyway this is our guest section uh within the habitat um, this is something that for me is just second nature to add inside a walkthrough habitat to make sure that our guests get in there, get in there, excuse me. But again, I feel like I probably could have done without it. Uh, cause guests would have been using this path anyway to get from the redwood section to the taiga section and vice versa. Okay, so again, just making like a little cutout in the, uh, in the path so I can add trees and such. And um, it really is just a formula at this point with regards to building. And um, I don't know, maybe that might be boring. I don't know, but this is like my safe space, my happy place. Uh, I just have certain, I don't know, standard things that I do when it comes to building. And one of those being, you know, throw in a circle of a different path color, uh, leave a cutout in the path to add some nature. And right away, without any thought process whatsoever, I think it does elevate the build, honestly. So, if you can take anything away from this horribly rambly video, I hope that, you know, it's either that or give yourself a break and remember that you're playing a game. It's supposed to be fun. <laughs> Don't overthink it, honestly. <laughs> Little, like, moon-shaped section over here. Because why not, honestly? Why not? I just felt like... It, I, I struggled with like bringing the two paths together and then branching off into the habitat. So I figured, yeah, this weird chunky moon, that's how we're going to do it. <laughs> Again, like I'm saying, uh, the creative process was uh, dead silent. Crickets, I tell you. So this is the actual path that goes through the habitat itself. I'm going to make some, I'm going to make a, a change here in a little bit. And... At the midway point, I switched path types. Uh, so this is the um, like the decorated Jurassic Park path, like one of one of the new paths that we got. I mean, new from like a few updates ago. And in the redwood section, we have the brown path because even though I'm not as strict with it as I intended to be at the start, the point of the different biomes is also that we're using different buildings and different paths to emphasize the differentiation between the different biomes. You know, it's not just for this one, I use the snow brush and for this one, I use the sand brush. You know, we're, we're trying to use the other tools available in the game to enhance that, um, that different look. Um, but again, I'm not being like super strict with it because sometimes you just feel like, okay, I need this specific building in here and it just happens to be of a certain building set and that's whatever. That's fine. Again, it's supposed to be a game. It's supposed to be fun. <laughs> so I'm just like, I've added a little bit of a decorative pond for our dinosaurs to, uh, to drink from. I will say though, and that's another tip if you're going to make a walkthrough slash migration habitat like I did. Uh, I personally always end up turning off the hunger and thirst for dinosaurs. Because at some points during my builds, there's always going to be a habitat where I'm like, okay, it's not working. Uh, especially with regards to herbivores, I really don't like the uh, the paleobotany in a lot of the biomes. For example, in the taiga biome, I don't want to add any of the paleobotany foliage. So for a build like this, I usually end up turning off the uh, food and water needs for dinosaurs. The problem with that is that you can't really force the dinosaurs to actually migrate. So my dinosaurs are just wandering aimlessly, soullessly back and forth through this habitat. But what you can do if you want to create a build like this as well, you are probably, uh, you know, playing the game with certain realistic settings, you know, animals like eating and drinking. And that's okay. Uh, if you have kept those settings on, you can really maximize the whole migration idea by putting food in one half of the habitat and water in the other half of the habitat. And this will force the dinosaurs to move back and forth. Now, in Jurassic World Evolution 1, this was foolproof. Like, yeah, foolproof. That's, 
I don't need to come up with any synonyms that already says it. In Jurassic World Evolution 2, it's a little bit more tricky. You have to be mindful that the dinosaurs actually see both the food and the water as part of their territory. You know, if, if it's a really large habitat um, with a large distance between the food and the water, your dinosaurs might be making their territory around the food without ever venturing far enough to even be aware that there's water on the other end. And that's when things can get messy. And that's when PETA starts, you know, knocking on your door. So be mindful of that. <laughs> so if you're going to make a, a, a migration habitat, keep in mind that, you know, you want to you wanna have some distance between your food and water. But keep an eye on the territories of your dinosaurs so that they are actually moving back and forth and sustaining themselves. Okay. In the meantime, I've just been adding more details to this section. Uh, this little guest section, I added like a barrier of decorations all the way around. So my Edmontosaurus and my Brachiosaurus wouldn't be able to wander into this specific section. Because, you know, this is where the tables and chairs are going to be. And I feel like that realistically might be a little bit destructive you know i can imagine a brachiosaurus just you know casually walking through these tables and chairs kicking them out of the way with or without people sitting in them uh so that's why that little guest section is like completely closed off using decorations but it still feels open the rest of it however is completely accessible to all of the dinosaurs and that's why i didn't do anything with the path um that connects the two halves, which is very difficult for me. It's very difficult to leave path unlined, personal growth. Uh, but obviously to, to be able to have your dinosaurs move freely, you can't have a lot of, a lot of decorations obstructing them. So that's why that big stretch of path in between is just completely free of decorations. So the dinosaurs can move around there absolutely freely without uh yeah without being obstructed by decorations i did line this path going up again this is my stupidity barrier as i call it uh anytime uh, a path is at an elevation i tend to add a stupidity barrier around it even though the ai in game is intelligent enough that guests don't actually you know stumble off a, a cliff <laughs> in real life um people would need a stupidity barrier so I draw a really weird line with realism. You know, on one hand, I have no qualms with turning off dinosaur food and thirst. You know, I have no I have no problem saying I reject your reality and substitute my own in that regard. But then on the flip side, for something like oh, you need to, you need to have a barrier to stop your people from falling off this from like rolling off this hill. Apparently, that's where I draw the line. Look, don't ask any questions. I have no answers. Only more confusion, honestly. Anyway, <laughs> as we move on through the build, uh, I'm adding these rocks at choice sections, and you can probably already see what I'm doing. It never fails to amuse me, but what I'm doing is I am hiding the invisible fence. Uh, specifically, like those connection points where there's like this bulky metal thing um, I did my best to hide that with some nature stuffs. Um, the rest of the invisible fence, I just left it. You know, that's, it, it's a park. You're going to see some fencing. That's fine. Uh, but those bulky bits, I did want to hide from sight a little bit because they felt a little bit like an eyesore. And then, of course, adding in some more redwoods to, um, to emphasize that this part is the redwood biome. I think we're getting pretty close to the end of our build here. We are indeed getting pretty close to the end of our build. So I'm just checking some stuff. Um, and honestly, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Uh, especially, you know, considering the circumstances under which is, it was built. <laughs> you can just see me flying around. I'm adding a, uh, a restroom over here. Just because... I don't know, I felt like it was needed, apparently. When you gotta go, you gotta go. And when you gotta go, you wanna make sure that they can go in the proper place. And not, you know, in the bushes. <laughs> no, not the bushes! 
I hope you enjoyed this build and that it has given you some ideas for your own builds in Jurassic World Evolution 2. I want to thank you so, so much for joining me. If you did enjoy it, give the video a like. If you want to see more creative builds and tricks like getting the gate onto the path, then check out the channel and consider subscribing. I would very much like to have you join the 200,000 people who have already subscribed. That is absolutely awesome. Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and until next time, enjoy the game.